Today we, I, I did one session and we ended up in three, three and a half hours, almost four hours of prayer ministry for people. And uh, there were some amazing um, things that God did for people, one really special um, healing and restoration that took place. And uh, we kind of, we went away after the break and, and just kind of chewed on stuff with the Lord and decided to change the flow. I suspect that tomorrow we'll end up doing exactly the same as we did today, just teaching one session and and, and, and then ministering to a whole load of people. Um, and, uh, and and that's really good. So we've kind of adjusted it. Um, I'm, I'm almost tempted to say that this, this session I'm going to teach on shame, but I'm going to do it really differently. Um, it's, it's kind of backed by popular demand. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's not often you get asked to keep teaching on shame, but, but when, I, when I taught on it on Wednesday, it, it flowed so well that it, it is literally backed by popular demand. Um, and now, for those of you who've got the notes, um, I'm going to do a really condensed version. I'm, I'm probably going to go through the first, um, just the first page of the notes in your manual. It's on page 80. Just to set the scene on the whole topic of shame, um, I really want to, to get this recorded and out onto YouTube. So whenever they run out of discs, I'm going to stop, okay? Just so we don't lose anything of the content of this. But I'm really going to take you through Peter's story and show you what, what, what happens, what God can do with someone who experiences some of the most traumatic shame ever to what God can redeem. And for those of you that sat through it on Wednesday, while we were in praise and worship, the Lord gave me a whole fresh download of stuff on Peter's life. So you may have thought you've heard it, but I guarantee you won't have heard the first bit. All right, so I'm, I'm, I love doing this. I, it's one of the few times I've ever stood down from speaking on Wednesday night, uh, Wednesday afternoon, and I went to Jacqueline and I said, you don't even have to tell me that was good, because I know it was really good. It just, sometimes you can just tell, um, and, and, and that was one of them. So, shame is, is one of those great topics that, that influence pretty much everybody in this room at some point in their life. It, it's, and, it's, and, and even more so in, in this culture, um, here in Singapore, which is why I, I, I was going to do um, control tonight, um, last weekend, if you remember, I spoke a lot on the spirit of fear and how fear can, can hold us and trap us from becoming the people that God wants us, wanted us to be. And, it's, and fear and control and shame are one of the most common major strongholds that, that we wrestle with in our lives through our life. Even this side of the cross. But I'm here to tell you there's a place you can overcome. There's a place beyond that in which you can live um, and, and, and move and operate and live in the fullness of everything that Jesus did on the cross. Psalm 34 verse 5 says, Those who look at him, which is the Lord, those who look at the Lord are radiant. Their faces are never covered or masked with shame. Those that suffer shame pretty much always wear masks. You guys have got it down to a fine art. You know, Americans wear makeup, they drive flash cars, they try to look successful even when they're not. You know, and, and that's, just their, that's just their mask. You know, well, you guys are really difficult to read. <laughs> and this is your happy face. <laughs> this is your sad face. This is your I'm ecstatic face. It's, <laughs> I wish I was teasing, but I'm not. <laughs> it, it's, it's that I'm not letting anybody know how I'm really feeling. And, 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 and yeah, it, it's a mask. It's as much a mask as... Pause it. Are you filming? <laughs> 